All right, today we're fully breaking down the Hardpoint six star that we had versus the Seattle Surge. I did this breakdown on streams, but I figured I'd give you guys a little bit of an intro with some context on what we're doing in this specific breakdown. So thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. They sent two guys plat, one guy blue. One guy's gonna be late playing towards the stage side. We sent two people outer, two people inner. So let's see what happens here. Get the first kill. I don't think, I don't think AG sees this guy U side. We end up getting the kill anyway. Ken gets the first. He probably should have stayed down on time though, because at, at that point, like we we have no on time. We can't really contest. A pretty common. Thanks for the tier one sub. Appreciate that. Welcome, man. Man, how do I improve timings? When people say Shotzi has great timings, he's able to find gaps and setups because of it. How does that work? Uh, knowing where people are responding pretty much exactly is really, really important. Knowing when they are going to spawn because of the kill feed and knowing where they're going to spawn. Those two things is how you can calculate like where your timing is going to be based on your positioning at the moment. So combining those two is like your, your key. So looking at kill feed, realizing the, the timer that when they're going to spawn up, you know, based on the respawn timer and based on your positioning and your team's positioning where they're going to spawn or at the opponent's positioning, I guess. And because we die at time here, they start soaking time here. Like, honestly, we should have held, once we won the break off, we should have held, you know, basically 40, 40 points on this. So the break off didn't go as great. Like we won the break off technically, but the plays afterwards uh, didn't help our case. That, that's what kind of helped, or that's what kind of happened in that phase series on the Rio. Like we won the break off, we got the first two kills, but draws a pinch instantly, and we didn't pick up on it. So it's like we we got those the first initial kills. We basically won the break off, but one one or two plays happened right after the break off, and it completely nullifies everything we did. But it's a good rotation to P two. Ken has to stay alive in the back here. They know he's here. I, I don't know what Abuz is doing. Maybe he thought he was. He knows that he's somewhere in this position because he got ki he got killed or Kyler got killed here, but he doesn't check this closer corner. I guess he's assuming that he's behind this this hedge over here. But Ken just gets a free two there. Now he sees 04. He can try and finesse this. I don't know how he doesn't get that kill, but that's a big kill by 04. And now he's going to spawn out because 04 is blocking, obviously, the back spawn. They, sp they break from the front, so pretty good break from them. Honestly, like, maybe AG doesn't die in front without a trade, but I don't know. It's uh, You want to get pushed out at some point, but you just have three guys going there. It's unfortunate that Ken doesn't win this gunfight. I thought he should have, and now they're getting converged from both sides. Like if we're gonna have to, if we're gonna die on one side of the hill, we have to stay alive on the other side of the hill. If we're gonna die on one side of the hill, we have to stay alive on the other side. So we go two down right at the start of the break. They start soaking again, pretty hard to break from the front if you have no action towards the back, but we're able to make it at least somewhat mixy with just trades going there and back. But again, they just they just win the trade battle. Now we kind of just have to focus for uh, for the speed three. Because in my opinion, the P3 is probably a bigger hold. That shit is, is really hard to break sometimes. And they, wait, this is so unfortunate, guys. Okay. This is what I was talking about where everyone was uh, saying, oh, was well, slow starts, slow starts. Okay, sure. The slow start in the P1 should not have happened. I think we just need to stay alive on time. We should soak that 40. The break happens here. I mean, honestly, I think the, the Ken kill should happen regardless, but okay, AG dies off, you know, the front side and Ken dies on the back side, so we get converged on. This is where we're, we should get back in the game. P3, we should have a full hold here, and Brandon nades, and he nades on t this top fucking gold archway thing, and it bounces down right on AG. Very, very unlucky. 
I don't know the chances. If he tried to do that a hundred times, he probably doesn't do it. And it bounces off. Nade's AG right here. Boom. Team Nade. If it were to go where it was supposed to go, it would Nade right over here. And, you know, Ken probably gets a three-piece here instead of a two-piece or whatever. Whatever. So, that's, that's them literally break onto the hill from the front end of the hop because obviously we have you know ant was over towards this side he spawned out we could have held this easily if the nade if the nade happens we even get two two or three kills for it but abuza gets the one and the and the two piece now, now the fact that like it's just mixy completely screws up the entire break or the whole the hold for us because white time here they spawn in the back it's because of all the mixiness, they get a, a good spawn with the white time. Now they're converging both ways. There's no real way for us to read it in the moment because it's only white time for like legit half a second. As you'll see, gets contested, boom, white time for like a second. And then we can start getting on the hill. We spawn out middle. So now we can like kind of tell that there was some type of split spawn action or at least that they're spawning the back here because of our spawn. But I think it was Ant. Ant sees this guy towards pool, right? So he sees the guy towards pool and he gives that relay to, to Brandon to cover it. But he doesn't think that he's already like in the pool. He just saw that he, or he just knows that he was like towards P2. So he takes a water route like through pool and, and Brandon's still looking for it because he's not assuming that it's going to be you know the guy's already passed so that's why he's still looking for this here because we like Ant had given him a call out that the guy was p2 but he'd already got through to towards the water we think that they're spawning the back but because of the timing with them spawning the back number six and number five are so confused because they're assuming that at least one guy is going to hit through like towards white here right and it's really weird so that's why they're thrown off here too number five and six because that's why that's when uh ken turns around because he's like okay they're probably not in the back uh but you know there's another team kill ant kills ag i guess with a stun or something direct impact and it's just a completely fucked hold are individual POVs recorded as well for revolved view no we only get like two observer point of views but not like one specific player or something like that or all the specific player, like all player point of views. We don't get that. We get a few, few different observer point of views, but not, never like all point of views. So we move on to a P4. Obviously, we're already top office. Number five, AG, or sorry, Ken is going to try and make a play towards U side. Ant dies here. But it's more so like he's trying to get positioning on the hill. Obviously, he doesn't see the guy's stage yet. But regardless, he's able to get information that this guy's on the stage for a trade. And we're able to still refill the office. So Ken gets this trade easily. He can try and get a two-piece. Great two-piece. We know they're spawning from the front because we're spawning the back. He gets trade after getting a two-piece. Regardless, whatever. We're starting to push out the stage now. Or at least just holding time because now we have one person pinching. See if Ant gets a kill here. He does. He sees two, at maybe three, towards you side. So now we're just going to play tight on hill. Tight on hill, have our guy top office stay alive as long as possible for these guys on the hill to, to kind of finesse. And it's taking another pinch towards you. This is, can disrupt their push too. We get two kills, and gets another kill. Good plays, good hold. Which hill is the hardest break? I think, personally... I think personally on this map, it's it's either P3 or P5. Maybe the maybe the P3, but it's one of those two, in my opinion. This is a, a, an unfortunate timing because AG pushes out checkout. We don't have anyone uh, watching front because number five is watching front, but he's watching like the, the U side front, you know? And he, I guess he doesn't peek this guy on the stage because number one just gets passed and he dies at a, at a top office. Oh no, maybe he's not top office. 
Yeah, no, he's he's at the lower door. He's not top office. And he just he just gets you know slid on by 04. And instead of okay, so this is a really fucking weird spawn. I'm not gonna lie. I guess it's because we're pushed up, super pushed up DJ. But how are we gonna read this? That's kind of I mean. Maybe because we're just exiting the spawn, because it's like, I don't know, we just spawned there too. Like, number eight literally just spawns there. Right there. Like, I don't know. I mean, that is hard as fuck to read. Number two and number one spawn legit at the exact same time. So, at 18 seconds left. We're on old. We're assuming, okay, we're just going to set up for new, get towards the P5 area. We're not expecting this spawn to happen. I'm not going to lie. Like, that shit's... That's crazy. Now we spawn out, so we know they're going to spawn in the back. So now we turn for it. Let's see if Ken's reading it. Yeah. So if if we didn't spawn here, there was no way for it to know for us to know that they were going to they had spawned in the back. I'm not gonna lie. Like it would have been too hard to to read. Brandon picking up the bag. This is good kills. Now he's just taking timing. So he's going back and forth to see if anyone uh, is going either this way or through this way. So he's just taking his timings to the back, just holding it that side. AG sees this guy. The only thing that's annoying right now is this is only one guy and he's taking the attention of two people. So we only have two people, one person that has to be glued to time and one person that's out over here for these three guys. But Ant makes a two-piece. So Ant gets a two-piece on the hop wall. That's huge for us to at least make some type of uh, layer for the push for them. Because now Ken, instead of having to get slid down by two guys, just has to worry about one guy. So Ant getting a two-piece is absolutely massive there. Insane spawns. They spawn P3. We spawn out long right behind them. And then we have another guy, White, that spawns out right behind this guy. So crazy spawns. We spawn behind that guy. He gets a freebie. He should probably get traded out instantly, though. Yeah, I mean, AG's not ex expecting the guys to spawn right behind him, too. They still haven't hit the hill yet because they're waiting for another teammate. Ant gets killed off spawn. Ken, huge kill on the water. And Brandon gets another kill towards P2. So, Ken and, Ken and Brandon are constantly staying alive here is, is why we're, we're still holding this. Ken's making absolute plays right now. But it all stems, in my opinion, it all stems from that, that Ant two-piece at the hop wall. He doesn't get this two-piece, two guys run on a Ken, and they kill him. In my opinion. So, again, impact plays. Love to see it. And that, that guarantees the P5 hold for us. Which side is good side for P5? Also, why is there so many splits on P5? Well, I can't tell you why there's so many splits, but it's basically like four different spawns. So you have one close spawn. It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like Karachi. Karachi P3. If you guys can recollect the spawns from Karachi P3, it's basically the same type of thing where it's like two close spawns. If they're blocked, it goes to the, the deeper spawn. But again, there, there's some... I think it's more controllable on the Karachi one. This one, the one that we just saw where it was like one guy spawns here, one guy spawns here, and then one guy spawns here, and these two guys on the same team and this guy's on a different team. I don't know. That... That feels weird to me. Regardless, we hold the P5, get back in the game. Now we're already set up on new. Ant is already uh, like looking towards DJ. So he has the initial uh, positioning towards new and he can relay that to information to the rest of his team. Number seven, AG tries to help him out on P1 time because we know this P1 can be really important for us uh, to take the lead in this game now. So we're going to hold the rest of this time. They're going to start playing towards P1 as well because obviously they want to rotate. Um, I think they end up getting the kills towards P1 here. They just have more bodies at this point. Yeah, they, they just completely... They have more bodies and they're just coordinated with it. We we can't because we we died. We had one guy on time, uh, old time too. So wasn't really a way for us to really win that break unless we, you know, really made some plays. But they have the initial hold. They're playing super tight, so they, they have their white watch, they have their UE watch, and they have their, their uh, what's it called? Their mid-stairs watched. No one's actually watching blue, but 
Uh, they'll probably pick it up in a second. Yeah, so this guy goes top plat to watch you. So I like that play by number one. Ank has a kill towards white side. So now they have to worry about white side. So that's why he's going to wrap over towards you. Maybe try and catch a timing there because they're going to be trying to watch uh, the white side. We tried double break from mid, mid stairs, but since we're double breaking and they already got the kill uh, on blue because, you know, he, this guy pushed out plat. It's a good kill because obviously Brandon has to first clear this before he can get to, to P1. We have to double push towards mid stairs because this is where our positioning's at. He's, uh, Abusa is actually hiding behind this bar. He has help from Kyler. He also has help from um, this guy, Platt, after he kills the guy. And Ant, after getting the first blood over towards this side, has to wrap around. So he, he's out of the fight at this moment. So it's just basically a 2v3. And that's just an easy like crossfire for them. You know, they have three guys watching the same exact lane. And it's just Ant alive, so... I'm, a lot of the P1, in my opinion, is just initial positioning. If you're the first to like actually get in the hill with numbers, uh, it really can be an easy hill to hold. Well, we somehow break back on in. So number one, O4 pushes out towards poolside, right? But he doesn't see this guy dub. So... You know, number five, Ken pushes out through P2, and he's just going to go up the mid stairs. And on the on the hill, you know, the guys on hill are just expecting that their left is being watched. They think that O4 has all of this side for them, so they're not even going to watch it because you know, if there was someone coming there, they'd expect a call out to be coming in. But O4 gets stunned. He goes around. He doesn't see this guy mid cut. And he just breaks on the hill for free. That's why, I mean, there's no way for Brezzy to know. Because he just assumes his left is covered. So that's what ends up happening here. Like that one timing with the stun, it was a great stun. I'm assuming it's Ken's stun. It has to be. And he just says, you know, this guy's not going to chomp me. All right, fuck it. I'm just going to go to hill. So Ken just breaks onto the hill. Boom. Now there's only two guys on the hill. We won one gunfight. We know the other guy's DJ. We can start soaking on our side time. AG gets a two piece. This is good. For something that should have been like a hold for another, what? Another 30 seconds by them was a big break by us. It was, and it was, it was Ken's play where he stuns this guy. The guy goes towards outer to look for him, but he just runs up middle. And now he make the rest of it mixy. All right, so we made like 10 seconds mixy, I'll say that. Because <laughs> they break back on in. Obviously, I think, in my opinion, even if you get broken, this is still the better side because you're able to reinforce so much quicker than if you're spawning out over here. Now we are start spawning P P4. We should know that they're obviously spawning in the back here and are already pressuring towards P2. That's when you get these P4 spawns. It's like the it's like these parallels. So technically, you could be spawning here. And you can be spawning here, or they can be spawning here, you can be spawning here. But if there's like pressure this side, that's what happens sometimes. Hey, it was gonna mess with the mic. How's it going? So, this is really good. I think a really good angle by Brezzy. They're gonna try and hold from the front because obviously we're coming from the back. They already are at new because they're, you know, they got those kills and now they can pressure towards new. So they go from P1 to P2. Going towards, you know, towels over here. He's playing this insane credit, just watching the vent. Number one could be watching, uh, or sorry, watching drop, and this guy could be watching the vent. Uh, all they have to do is watch their their towels or their outer to watch Brandon. But again, from Brandon's point of view, he can't see Brezzy in this situation. So it's really hard for Brandon in this situation because he's just expecting to get a gunfight towards this pool or like this kiddie pool towel side. But there's no way for him to see Brezzy. So this is a really good spot by Brezzy. So Brezzy, Brezzy gets a free kill. There's some trades that go on in time. AG just tries to play his life because he, you know, he gets a kill. He tries to hide in the vent. And he's just going to wait for his teammates. So we have to drop on in. Good job. We wait for our teammates. We engage together. One guy drop, one guy vent. Still, you know, it's really hard though because we're holding the hill. We have to worry about both our front and our towels. It's, it's you know, pretty decent gunfights and we have to reinforce the hill from some really tough angles where, it, again, it's 
it's either we go through the vent, we go through the drop, or we have to take a longer route through L over here. And if we go through L, these guys are probably going to be watching it. If we go through drop, they can be watching it easily and you are coming out of this fucking square hole. And same thing with, with the, the vent. You're just coming out of a square hole, so you have to do it pretty quick and you're just out in the open. There's nothing really on hill where you can kind of cover yourself, you know? So Brezzy, they still have this outer towels area. This is so, this area is so big for these P2s. If you have control of it. Brandon tries to break from L, they get a kill, they get the trades. Again, 04 trade battles once again. They are still reinforcing from the front. Hard for us to re-engage. Again, we have to go through drop, we have to go through L. They're gonna be watching L over here. They're gonna be watching drop over here. Very hard to break. Hey, if you have that front side control, I'm, in my opinion, like that, it's really hard to break just because of the areas you have to take to actually break yourself. So it's a good hold out of Seattle. They're just obviously continuously keeping those three lanes intact. We finally get the break on in, but it's only 15 seconds, obviously, because we just have to push through. We, we know we have to push through old because they are at old. We can't just take routes because then they're just going to like know based on their positioning at old that they're taking routes. They can play for it. Like if we, if we wanted to go, I'll explain this because you see a lot of times people like, oh, why are they hitting old? Why are they not rotating? But it's like, dude, if, the, if we spawned up here and started taking routes and they didn't hear or they didn't see anyone break onto this new hill. That's why you see a lot of times, maybe it's like a three, one, three people go around and one person plays old, but that one person playing old, they have to win their gunfight because if they lose their gunfight and they stay in the positioning, they just know based on the information that they're not coming in this area of the map. And you know, based on that deduction that like more people are hitting around. So now you can adjust to that. Now you can play people. You play for this. You can play people in the back, play for this play your people on time to watch white like you don't need to worry about your front anymore so it's it's so important like in those breaking situations to sometimes you sometimes you have to play through old that's just like basically the winning play sometimes and you know it doesn't look like a winning play because it's like oh they're not rotating but it's like dude if if one guy goes around and three guys push out the front at least you are contending both sides right but if you have you know all the everyone go around all four people and no one hits the front here then they know that it's going to be easy to play for so yeah so now we have to break p3 from the front so this p3 break is so important for us because look at the time 183 to 136 right this is a super holdable hill so if they hold this for a good amount of time this is very bad for us so we need to break onto this hill Kyler gets needed. In my opinion, I would not push out of it. I would not drop out of the hot paw because that's one person that us on our side can get easily traded out. So instead of playing tighter on time and like working with a booza here to hold this, because obviously they have number one pushed out watching front. They have number four pushed out watching the curve. So they know that we're all coming front. Right? So if we're, if we're trying to get this trade, it's kind of like, I don't know, this kind of looks like a tunnel vision kill because they know that we have to be coming from the front. So regardless, if he gets a kill, he's getting traded out. So now they adjust. They know they're coming front. Kyler gets the comms. They're all going to play for this. They're trying to nade. We have a streak. We use the streak. We don't get a kill for it, but we, we buy some time. We get people off of the time. They're not on time. It also allows Ant to make a play over here towards middle. He gets a kill here. That's a huge kill. That's a huge kill middle. Because now they have to worry about their white. We were breaking from the front, but Ant takes a route. So he has to break from, he's breaking from white. So they have to worry about that. And gets another kill. Regardless, even though he doesn't get this, this long kill, it sets up AG. It keeps, you know, it, we keep flowing as 
a constant mix with trades here because of the way that we were able to break at the beginning of the at the hill. Still, again, shit on, but <laughs> it's it's trade out, and we keep just trading out, which is good. Like going into the hill, this shit could have easily been wraps. They could have went up two thirty to what what was it one twenty or whatever. Now we're holding from the front. They're spawning the back. We just have to keep making this mixy trading out. We know that they can only come from two different areas. They can either come short or they can even come long. That's all you have to look at. If you want to take a route, Ant's already taking the route to New. He's already thinking about New because he knows that it's a, a really important rotation. He's just going to trust the teammates at old. And, and Kenny wins the gunfight. Or Kenny wins the trade that we win the trade battle. So... Now we know that they're not going to be hitting old because we know they're trying to go towards P4 because it's going to be a really big hill for this map. And Ken leaves time because he wants to go middle. He knows that this is a really important cut. If he can get people going from white to you, that helps out Ant's job so much more. Right? So instead of taking these last, what is it? Two seconds? Four seconds. He leaves time because he knows... We just got a four down. They're all going to be spawning back here. They're going to have to go curve or they're going to take go to like checkout or they got to go white to you or white to mid, whatever. So that's why he he picks this up. This is, I mean, this is great play by Ken. He's already in a five streak too. He wants to get this guy coming off spawn for his streaks. No one takes a white route though. So now we know they're all coming front and that's why he just... That's a big kill because we... I mean, Ken would have had streaks there. But again, we're already initial positioning. One guy office, one guy on hill. Ant's going to go out, check out, but we die. So this is really unfortunate because we knew that the, all of them were coming front side. But because Ken doesn't get a kill here and because they trade out Ant towards the front. Or they don't, they don't trade out Ant for a little bit. But the fact that AG and, and Brandon both die right like instantly really sucks because Ant just, or sorry, Brandon just gets to the window, and he's already met with a gunfight from Abuza, and Abuza rips him from the top window. AG dies right away. We, they know last guy alive is towards this checkout area. Ant stays alive, though. They don't trade him out initially. So him staying alive checkout just buys some more time. Look at... Guys, impact plays here. Impact plays. They know Ant is somewhere over here towards stage. O4 is the only one to challenge him. He gets 04, and now he's just hiding. He's just hiding underneath, waiting for them to challenge, buying as much time as possible because he knows people off spawn are going to be trying to get back to the hill, right? He's buying time. No one's challenging him. This is the most important kill for them, and they're so, like, worried about it that number five, Ken, is off spawn, comes water drop, and gets two free kills. Now we're still holding the hill. From, from a, this situation... To this situation, where only one guy's alive, it's, it's office. That's a play that's uh, so fucking huge for this map that I don't think people realize. You know what I'm saying? Like, guys, it's 193 to 154. 46 seconds is left on this hill. If they get, if they get Ant here, if he was traded out, and they start holding it from this, this front side, all they have to do is watch the drop, and they've already in office. So they can watch their back here. But Ken gets this two-piece because Ant is buying time. Boom. They never kill Ant. He's still alive. We trade the guy out of office because we have three guys on hill. And we hold the rest of this time. Right? So, impact plays. We see that they're going through the back here. This is, again, a 3-1 type thing. Three guys who go through the back. One guy's going to play through the front. Try and disrupt the setup. Let's see if Brezzy gets a kill here. We, we know that they're coming like drop. So this is an easy funnel for us. This guy actually took a route checkout. So props to him. They end up winning those gunfights. Whatever. 15 seconds left. We still got a good 25 and limited them from getting 25 on that P4 towards the end when like Ant was last alive. And we have rotation in new now. So they play through old. We're going to be spawning towards new. So again, we, we held the P5 the first time. Let's see if we can do it again. All right. So obviously they're coming off old. We spawned towards new. 
we technically don't know yet uh, if they're going to come through the back. We're expecting them to come through the back at least like multiple people. I didn't think they were going to be all of them like coming through the back here. So Ken's really big. Ken is playing just an off angle here. He was actually trying to get like, I was, I remember watching his point of view, but he was actually trying to get to some type of better angle, but he just ended up going just, just prone here. Pretty, pretty dirty spot. Cause it's hard uh, for them to actually clear. Uh, so if, if they get a kill on him, it, you know, that's big, but they would have to slide out and actually check this very hard to actually check it, especially when you're in a breaking situation and you know, someone in the pool side is probably going to be looking uh, towards this way towards L so this is a big play by Ant he's already top plat watching through blue to see if anyone is coming this way through middle or like trying to hit through the vent or whatever and you know AG's watching middle in case people were coming off of old this way and you know Seven's watching the hot ball in case they came from this way so everything's covered we just got to figure out where they're coming from we got to get that information you know Ant wins a kill over here, so he knows that it's probably some type of through the back push. He can relay that to Ken. They don't check Ken's corner. He gets a kill for free. Uh, he's just going to get traded out, though. So he should get traded out here because of the, his positioning. It's just a one and done spot. But now we know, based on this information, that two guys are here. So we know, you know, it's a good death because he got a kill and he got information of where their last two guys are. So now we can play for that. So we're looking P2. Unfortunately for AG, or for, unfortunately for Ant, they instantly you know, check front P2 and he's already there getting killed. Important for, for Brendan to stay alive on time now. He has to buy as much time, similar to what Ant was doing uh, on the P4, he has to buy as much time in the pool as possible. Make sure, or sorry, this is AG. Sorry, I thought it was Brandon. It's AG. AG, same thing as Ant, he has to buy as much time as possible. He gets to the, the close corner over here. Brandon gets a kill towards the front side because we know uh, based on our spawns that they're spawning front side. AG gets another kill in the water. Super big kills. He doesn't get the other kill, but we know, you know, last guy on time and we know they're spawning out towards P3. We can play for this. Huge kills. We're, I mean, we just literally just teamwork this. Make sure we clear out the pool. Now we're soaking time. 36 seconds left still on, on the P5. And we just play for them to come out P3. I think, I think, Amp, or who is it? I think Ken makes a huge play over here. AG, a good job finessing in water. He's learning, he's learning from, from Ant. He's learning from Sharks, bro. He finesses in the water. He sees people coming front side time. He just has to back away. He just plays off his teammate. He plays off Ken. Ken's already watching over here. He just has to play in this deep corner. He's safe from everyone that could possibly hit him out on time. And we also have Ant Dub cutting them off. So really good job on the hold here. Again, if you were in the water and people die around you, try and finesse as long as possible. As long, The more time you buy, the better it is because your guys are going to be coming off spawn and you'll, you'll at least give yourself a chance. Ant gets information on last guy. We just know last guy is towards pool. Brandon gets a trade. 15 seconds left. We know we have the rest of this time. So I actually, was, it was, it was, I was thinking of Ken's first P5. Sorry about that. But it was AG who made the, the play here to stay alive. Everyone covers over him. Whether it was Ken over here, whether it was Brandon over here, we're covering over. And whether it was uh, Ant. Sorry, did I take Ant again? I meant to say Ken over here, Brandon over here, or Ant towards Dub cutting this way. Everyone's just team working off of AG in the hill. Now, 11 seconds left. Game is going to be in our favor by 10 seconds. But again, they have that initial P1 control. Like I said before, you have initial control there. You have initial bodies. It should be favored for you. But off of spawn, Ken and Ant both decide with each other. They're going to teamwork you, you side here. They're going to try and take a different route. Try and fuck up uh, the setup for Seattle. And they get the trade here. So because they get the trade here, this makes them worry about you, right? So it kind of takes a little bit of tension off of the front for a second. Brandon is, is in a gunfight. He, he needs to stay alive as long as possible. He has to wait for AG off of old. Now they can try and teamwork the middle, uh, the middle stairs here. They get the kill on 04. That's a massive kill on 04. 
because because they get the kill in 04, who was towards you side, by the way, who he was the one who was going to be looking for Ken, but because they get information on people mid side, he has to work for that. So like, again, the, because of the disruption from this, you know, middle side, it, it buys some time for these guys, or sorry, from the you side, from stage side, because of the, these gunfights from Ant and Ken, that, that drove O4's attention this way. And once he hears that there's people mid stairs, he has to adjust for that too. And they just don't have enough people to watch all of that because this guy is watching blue, right? So they don't have people P1 side that can watch both and still have numbers on the gunfights, right? So oh, they know two are, are towards the middle side. Abuz is probably calling out that he needs help there. And while O4 is trying to get back, because he needs, he needs Ken. He needs Ken to try and stun his push and tries to just play one side, which is what he should do. But he just gets gunned by Brandon. And then Abuz is the last guy alive. Number two has to look for this now. And by... By doing that, what is he not watching anymore? He's not watching blue. Number six off spawn can, can pick that up. So, insane break from us. This is really good coordinated by our guys because, again, we get the first kill. We know last guy alive is bar side. Because there's two down and we know one guy's on time, Ken is going to take his timing to go to you. And because this guy is now watching front side or like the mid side, because there's numbers here, Abuza needs help. He's now giving up. Uh, he's now giving up blue, and can make the play. And it's a it's a clean four down, or three down, whatever you want to call it. We're on time now, and we just gotta soak. We know they're spawning P3. We just gotta we just gotta keep bodies towards here. AG wins a big gunfight towards the the P3 side, and he can just hold this hop wall if he wants. He can hold the right side. That's what he's doing right now. He's going back and forth, but he's holding this right side for them. That, that means all they need to do is watch, obviously, their white and watch their U. So that's what we're doing. We have two guys watching white, one guy watching U, one guy watching uh, the right side. So this, this spawn happens, uh, honestly, like, I guess it's because we're all pushed up. It must be, it has to be because we're all pushed up just in their shit. Um... I mean, I don't know if we, we calm this, but I guess it's like we read in that moment, like, okay, we are all pushed up right now. It's very possible for them to spawn out. I'm pretty sure that's what the calm was. AG's still playing for a possible P3 guy, and he gets that kill. Now we know they're all spawning uh, towards this blue side. We all turn around at the same time. But actually, we don't know. If we, we don't know for sure. So that's why, you know, 8, Brandon is still playing a little bit towards white because he's going back and forth just in case there were some type of weird split spawns because we, we just got the kill P3. But once we get that kill, we just stack time and they, they can't make the tail. So really good comeback by the guys. I mean, obviously that, that P4 play, the P3 break, the P5 hold, you know, everything towards that second half of the map was, was really important. So... Really, really good, uh, really good second half, I would say.